It was time to finally create a dragonfly journal and planner kit to represent my style and my brand. Welcome to Plan With Me for April. It's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. This kit is called Dragonflies Resurrected. Resurrection is the rising from the dead of a divine or human being who still retains his own individuality, though the body may or may not be changed. As I mentioned previously, I wanted this kit to represent my style and my brand. And I chose the word resurrected because when I created my brand with the dragonfly years ago, it was like I reinvented myself. Since then, I am healing from multiple burnouts and I wanted this kit to be a combination of the light and airy dragonfly who is finally free in her body, soul and mind, the grunge and soft floral elements. Of course, there had to be gold splatters <laughs> and some stitched elements as well. If I had to represent myself without words, this is what it would look like. I also want to give a huge shout out to my dear friend Maureen, who kindly created the stunning dragonflies for this kit. So thank you so, so much, Maureen. I could not have done this without you. As always, there are 12 journal pages in total, eight with focal points and four which can be used as more simple backgrounds to add journaling or other visual elements onto. Then we have the undated planner pages as well as ephemera pages. All of these are available both in A4 and US letter format. So please check which one you are selecting if you are interested in purchasing this kit. And you can find all the links below this video as well as my plan with me playlist 2023, where you can also find a video on how I made the planner I'm currently working in. By the way, I also have a book review coming a little later. So this is my current planner. As you can see, it is filling up quite nicely. I'm very, very happy with the bulkiness of it. And of course, we still have things to add here in our fourth signature for April. So let me show you the past month, March. I have added a few things here. So first of all, I had this odd shaped receipt here and I added these two coffee cups on both sides. This is of course from the March ephemera kit, Serene Spring. Since the coffee cups were the same size, I was able to back them onto each other. And I just added the three here from a Tim Holtz die cut and these tulips here from a random die just for a little more decoration. As you can see, I stenciled here in a similar color to the cup and here in a similar color to this cup. I still need to fill out a lot of this step tracker. Didn't do anything here. I think we did this in the plan with me March video, this decorating here and this here. So here we have a tag. I did journal on the back here. I have one of my tiny Serene Spring envelopes in here. And I actually, yep, continued journaling on that. I used one of my tuck spots here, added the number five. And then I added this tag onto which I wrote my to-dos on the back. And since this pocket has flaps and it's fairly roomy, and this tag was kind of always falling out. I don't know if you know that problem. So I ended up adding a little foam tape here on the inside and that kind of keeps my tag in there. So maybe that's something that would work for you if you have an issue with your tags falling out of tuck spots. For the past week, I've been keeping my to-dos on this little flip down here. I just stamped the word important here so that I know that these are my to-dos. This is again part of the ephemera kit from last month. Um, this week we are currently I again added one of these coffee cups, stamped the words top priority in the front, and this is where I'm going to add my to-dos. I'm kind of late with that. And what I did for this 
tuck spot here because I learned from this one here is I just cut off the flaps that were on the ephemera and glued it down so that makes it more narrow. So if you don't have a lot to tuck into your tuck spots, if you already know that in advance, then it's better to just cut off the flaps and use it like this because that way your ephemera will stick in there a lot better. Then I also stamped the words to do on here so that I know that this is where I keep my to do's. I added some Tim Holtz leaf stencils. They, they kind of blend in here really well, I think. I added some gold accents with watercolor. I think we did that already in the March video, if I'm not mistaken. This spread was empty still. As you can see, I stenciled here. Then this here is a paper bag, which is also a tuck spot. I haven't put anything in there yet. I first glued one of my tags from the Serene Spring Kit onto the paper bag. Then I glued this stencil negative on the front after I sprayed it a little bit, added some splattering and some gold embossing. I think for this, I just took my embossing pad and rubbed over it and then added my gold embossing powder over it. And I love the like random grungy effect that it gives me. Inside, I have some more photos from my Keeper of Memories workshop. I just love these. These were all the bundles with the collages that we made and then boiled. And I just think they look so, so pretty. And this is, <laughs> this is one of the tags from the kit, which is hardly recognizable anymore, which kind of totally did not come out like I wanted it to. It's kind of just a mess, especially here. Don't like it at all, but I'm leaving it in here anyway. I'm happy that I have this photo in here that I do like. <laughs> Then here, I really love this effect. This was also from the workshop and I just cut out the people and it makes them kind of come to life, doesn't it? I will share this in a future video coming up as well, but I'm, I'm so in love with this. So this is just glued down with some masking tape. As you can see, I stenciled on the back and I just love having that as this little flip here. <laughs> And then I made a pocket on this page, again, using a die cut negative that I grunged up. And then I sewed with my sewing machine inside two of these letters. I had done this previously in I think a junk journal snacks video. And I remember mentioning I loved it so much that I wanted to do that again. So this is me doing that again and not forgetting about it. <laughs> Go me. <laughs> and in here, I have two more photos of the workshop. One is this beautiful photo of all of the finished journals. How cool do they look? I actually almost considered cutting these all out, but then I wasn't sure what to do with them once they're cut out. So I might still do that. But until then, I have this photo like it is. And I have this, which was my personal bundle. Actually, it goes this way. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you would have seen that I posted this and I ask you whether you think I should put this on my studio wall. And I'm still thinking about that. Many of you had said, yes, yes, I should do that because I think it looks so cool. Maybe I could have it printed on canvas and then put it somewhere. I'm still pondering that. But it's fun also to just have it cut out like this. I think when you cut out images, they really come to life a lot more. This we've done in the Plan With Me March video. So there's a tiny little envelope here from the kit. It has a magnet underneath here and a magnet here so that it stays closed. And then here's another little tuck spot. And then I did this one off camera. This is kind of very random. <laughs> I used two of the envelopes from the kit and I decided to just sew down the whole page, dividing the envelopes into two halves. And I just stuck these pieces inside. They're kind of random. This is a die cut. This is from my kit. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I didn't know what else to stick in. Oops, I guess I didn't know what else to stick in there, but I still think it's fun. 
And then I added these two die cuts on which I experimented a little bit. So these are Tim Holtz die cut feathers. And I ran these through one of the embossing folders. And then I went over them with some gilding wax. First in turquoise and then in gold. So that was very, very experimental. <laughs> I'm not sure how much I love it, but it's something different. I have also already set up my April planner pages. So again, I've used the same font that I have been using for the previous three months. I will link all these die cuts that I have mentioned below this video in case you want to have a look. So that's my intro page for April, obviously. Then I have my calendar here, added the stamping of the days. Then I have a transparent pocket here with these cute feathers my tracker not sure yet what i'm going to do with this i have a cute bag here then i have the first full week second week with a vintage envelope here from a bank so it opens here and if i want i could of course open the side here for another pocket and there's the third week. Love this image so much. And then I have an empty week here because I realized I have too many weeks because when I <laughs> glued these in, I forgot that I actually don't need the first week, which is partially still the March week and then partially the April week. So I have this kind of left over, so I'm going to be covering this up somehow. I think I'll leave this because I think this is super pretty. And then we have the last week, with, which goes up until Sunday, April 30th. Then we have the second half of this transparent pocket. I will probably cut this open here. And finally, we have my books page. <laughs> All of these spaces here, and I only have one book read. But hey, maybe by end of April, I will manage another book. But speaking of books, why don't we do that now? I think that's the perfect transition. So as many of you are aware, I read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And it was one of those books I did not want to end. So I took my time reading it and savoring it. <laughs> this was my first book by Delia Owens. And by the way, please let me know in the comments below if you have read any of her other books. And if so, which one you would recommend that I read? In case you're not familiar with this story yet, let me quickly read the synopsis on the back. For years, rumors of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barkley Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. But Kaya is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone at the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand. Then the time comes when she yearns to be loved. When two young men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty, Kaya opens herself to a new life until the unthinkable happens. I would classify this book as a mystery, which is usually not my cup of tea, but it's also a story about resilience, survival, hope, love, loss, loneliness, desperation, prejudice, determination, and strength. Kaya, the main character, pulls at your heartstrings. The atmosphere of the marsh was tangible. There was drama. It's a coming of age story and we have romance. I know many of you have read this book already and commented under my previous vlog when I unboxed this book that I would love it and you were absolutely right. I highly recommend this book. It's beautifully and thoughtfully written. It evokes a lot of emotions and I loved every page. On Goodreads, this book has a 4.4 average rating I'm giving it a five stars and I am so excited that I can now finally watch the movie. Yay! <laughs> By the way, I have this book template available as well. You can find that linked below this video as well. 
So I want to add my to-dos for my first week here. I could, of course, just write them here, but it's kind of more fun to have them in a pocket or tuck spot or something. So I've cut everything out. I've printed these on 200 GSM paper. That way I don't need to back up ephemera like the tags, for example, or my journaling cards. They are ready to go as they are. I think I'm going to use one of these tuck spots. I think I like this one here. And again, they have the flaps. So I actually think I am going to cut those off because I don't want my card falling out. And then I'll just use my craft glue. And then I'll take one of the journaling cards. I love them all, to be honest. <laughs> How about this green one? Because we don't really have green here on this page. And I do have this dragonfly, which is a die cut, which I'm not able to link for you. I bought this years ago on a site I do not want to recommend. So sorry about that, but he could go on here. And I also want to add some gilding wax on top of him. I'm going to use gold. Surprise, surprise. This is from Craft Emotions. And I'm going to use my little finger, which is cut off from a rubber glove and is super handy to not get your fingers dirty while using a wax like this. And I'm just going to go over it in a kind of grungy way, not going over everything. I think that will do. And once that has dried a bit, I'm going to adhere it with my Liquitex matte gel. I find this is the easiest way to adhere delicate die cuts like this. Let's put them up here so that we can actually let's tilt him a bit. No, I put the glue in the wrong spot. <laughs> because of course I want him showing when I put him in the tuck spot. If you wanted to do something similar, but you don't have a die cut like this and you wanted the dragonfly, what you could also do is if you have the journal pages, you could just cut it out from those. You could even print the journal pages at a smaller percentage so that the dragonfly is a bit smaller to put on the card. So you could cut out either this one or this one, for example, there's a few options. Once that's dry, I'm going to add a few splatters in this beautiful turquoise, which I actually still have from my bubble paper video, which is like months ago, but I've just been keeping the solution here in this jar. It still has a dishwashing liquid in it, but I've been using it for splattering and it's perfect. No problem that there's some dish, whoops, some dishwashing liquid in here. And then I'm going to take this stamp, which I got in the US in one of the craft stores. Maybe it was Michael's, I am not sure. And I'll choose this one that says this week. And I'll use my Jet Black Stays On ink on a random scrap of copy paper. You could of course also use alphabet stamps if you have them to spell out whatever you want to spell out if you want to add your to-dos in this way. And then I'll add that either to the card up here. Let's see what it would look like in my tuck spot. I can of course also put it right here. It doesn't matter. Well, I'll just stick it on the card itself. And there it is. And I really want to do something with this piece here, which could obviously just be a belly band. And I think that's what I'm going to do with it. But I want to add it, maybe what about right here? Like that, because that gives me an interesting shape here. I'm not going to trim it down. I actually want it sticking out like this. 
Let's first cut open this side of the envelope. Just cut off his sliver from this end. Okay. Then let's add some stenciling to the back since the ends will be showing. And what could be more fitting than this Dragonfly Wing Stained Glass Stencil by PM Artist Studio. I will link this one below for you along with a 10% discount for orders over $30. I'm going to stick with my turquoise. So I'm going to use my Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide. And I just need to do the top and the bottom because the rest won't show anyway. So that would peek out like that. That's fine. I also want to add something here because that's quite plain. Why not just use the same stencil? Wow, <laughs> that's a very big contrast. Is it too much? I don't know. Should we try to spray that with some water to get some oxide effect maybe? Let's see what will happen. Let's blot it with our kitchen towel. Oh wow, that has quite an effect. Look at that. Oh, I love that. It's much more muted now. I really like it. But instead of just adding this here, I don't know, I wanted to have something else coming from underneath along these two edges or maybe just one of the edges. I have some wallpaper strips here. The black is definitely too much. I have this light blue here. No, both sides is definitely too much. I'll just do it. No need to overthink this. <laughs> and I'm going to add a strip of masking tape over the edge here so that nothing gets stuck when I slip it into my belly band, you know what I mean? That way it should just slide through. And I'm also going to take this to my sewing machine and sew right along here and here to make it look like the belly band is actually sewn on. And then I can just glue it on right over the sewing on the back side. So there's our belly band. I should have definitely considered this before, but now I feel like I want to stamp a number here on the wallpaper. I'm going to take one from this Field Notes Tim Holtz set. I will also link this for you below. And by the way, if you're interested in this stamp storage system, which I am still loving after months of using it, you can also find that video linked below this one. So let's try, for example, this num Oops, no, not that one. This number. I have no idea how this is going to go on a very bumpy wallpaper. Could be a total flop. And I should have added a writing board underneath. How not to stamp. Oh, it's okay. Could have been worse. Oh, what I didn't realize now was that the masking tape is showing. So let me just peel that part off. Same thing on the bottom part. All good. And I also want to do something here. 
I would love to add one of those round images on the flap here. Either this one or one of these grungy ones. I have a thought with this one. I also have these little dragonflies here which are also from PM Artist Studios. They're called Dragonflies, surprise, surprise. <laughs> and there's a whole set here, and these are one of the smaller ones. Again, I will link these for you. And the smaller one of the two actually fits here pretty well. So I'm thinking, what if I add this as a mask and then stencil around it so that only the dragonfly image will show here? but maybe it's better to use this one because I think the other one is a bit dark. So what color do we do this with and how do we secure the dragonfly? I'll secure the dragonfly with a piece of masking tape by just rolling that up so that it becomes double-sided and then stick that on there, center that like that. I'm going to stick to my peacock feathers. I am tempted to use black, but the black suit that I have is only one of the small pads and I don't think it's very juicy, so I don't think that would work as well. The cool thing is that we can actually still see the design through it. And again, I'll add some water spraying. Wow, that is such a cool effect. Look at that. Okay, let's peel it off and see what this looks like. I'm so curious. Oh yeah, that turned out pretty well. So we can add that here, but of course we need to do something with this blank surface. Let's try something else. I'm going to use one of these faded type stamps by Stampers and Animals and Tim Holtz. The number is CMS397. Again, I will link these for you as well. And I'll take this one. I'll use my peacock feathers again and first add that directly to the stamp but I want a grungy impression, so I am going to add some water. Let's see what happens. Which way is up? This way. <laughs> oh yeah, love that. Now, since this is wet, so I'll just add some more of that here. I want to make sure it's dry before I add it onto my oxide pad again. Let's try that again. Fabulous result. Okay, I'm going to clean this off so that rinses right off under the tap. I've dried this in the meantime and I love the way it looks. And I've also sewn around this here twice. And that can then go here. But I don't like the white showing here. I could just go over it with my brush. Okay, let's glue that on. And if you've watched Louise and my Defemorember series from 2022, our December daily series where we make ephemera using prompts, then you will probably remember all of these paper bags. So I have quite a few left and I took out all of the ones that have a dragonfly theme. So this one has the dragonfly stained glass window stencil in the background. And I just want to see if any of these might fit on this one page that I said I need to cover up, this one here. So let's see which color theme would work best. This one actually wouldn't be so bad. Then I have this one. Would also be okay. 
And there's this one. No, that black is totally too harsh. Then we have this green one. I am loving that because this ochre here really works well with the green I have in the background here and the yellow. Then there is this one. That's also kind of fun because it mirrors the round image here. Mm -hmm. Then we have this purple one with the small dragonflies. That also works. They all kind of work. We have this one. Again, the colors work beautifully together. Really like that. And then we have another one with round images. But again, the black I think is just too harsh here. So actually I have two that I favor. It's either this one or this one. Or this one. This one here, I think, is the most balanced, even though it has the black, right, that I said was too harsh. But maybe this black doesn't disturb me as much because it has the white splatters on it. This one, I don't know. Decisions. This one is very friendly. Since the bag is too big, like, I mean, I could still just glue it on as a bag like this, but I was thinking of actually cutting it out and then just using the front side because then I wouldn't lose the back side. I'm gonna go with that one. So I'll just go ahead and chop off the sides. And if you want to know how I made these, you can find that video linked in my Defemorember playlist which you can also find below this video. I want to keep the number 16. Yeah, that way I can definitely use the back side as well. I stitched around it as well. And now I'm going to use my one and a half inch circle punch to punch a notch. And then we can just add it as a pocket. So we've made progress. We have our little journaling card here. We have an envelope here into which I can add something and we have a belly band here to stick something into and we have a large dragonfly pocket here. I hope you enjoy this kit as every month. <laughs> Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.